Hello everyone, Neuronar here, and today I have a video that may be useful for a lot of you that have an older vehicle with a 3800 engine. Here behind me, I have a 1991 Buick LeSabre. With the very venerable 3800 engine. These vehicles may not last forever, but almost all of them go to the junkyard with a good engine in them yet. This is the 3800 Pre-Series 1 engine. It was made from 1987 through 1991, so this is the last model year that had them. After that, they switched to the Series 1 engine. However, the changes were fairly minor. They changed the uh, intake manifold and such. This video applies specifically to the Pre-Series 1 and the Series 1. And this video is how to fix an intermittent stalling condition. You may drive your vehicle, it'll abruptly shut off, and it may or may not refire. And that problem is often very difficult to track down. I actually had that issue with this a number of years ago, and ended up finding out that it was the crankshaft position sensor down in here. After more research, uh, I found out that uh, that's not a, an entirely uncommon problem. On all modern engines, and this is a modern engine even though it's that old, the crankshaft position sensor uh, and sometimes camshaft position sensor are the really the only sensors your engine can't run without. It can guess on a lot of things, but when it comes to firing the spark plugs, it needs to know exactly where the engine is or it can't fire them. So in this particular engine, the Series 1 and Pre-Series 1, the crankshaft position sensor is down here, and I'll show you a better shot of that later, but there is... Uh, somewhat of a corrosion issue. I actually had to replace that sensor a few years ago. Um, you have to pull off the uh, harmonic damp dampener and everything to get to it. Uh, it's not too bad, but it's kind of a pain. Um, so I replaced that sensor and I found out after I replaced it that the real problem wasn't the sensor, it was that it was corroded. Water had gotten into the connector, uh, probably salt water because of where I live, and it corroded the pins away. I replaced the sensor and now this thing runs great again. However, it's been a few years as I mentioned and I've noticed some of the same symptoms start to come back. One of the first symptoms that I noticed was that the tachometer would jump around. It wouldn't hold steady, even though the engine RPMs I knew were steady. And sometimes it would just read incorrectly. Everything continued to operate absolutely perfectly, so I didn't think a whole lot of it until the car quit working abruptly one day. One hot day, it just stalled and it wouldn't restart until it cooled off, then it would restart again. And it took me a while to figure it out, but it was the crankshaft position sensor, as I had mentioned. So I replaced it, but these symptoms are starting to come back. It still runs fine, but I'd like to re repair it uh, to make it more reliable for the winter time. So if you ever have one of these old 3800 vehicles, and the 3800 is one of the most produced engines in world history, because it's been made for so many years and put in so many different vehicles, so this applies to a lot of different people. If you ever have trouble with these engines abruptly stalling, check the crankshaft position sensor, and it's fairly easy to do. I'm going to show you here on this particular vehicle how I'm going to, in just a few minutes, or at least it would only take me a few minutes if I wasn't recording it, I'm going to uh, fix this thing up. It really is pretty easy, so let me show you what I'm going to do to check it out, to see if it's a problem, and then to remedy it. The crankshaft position sensor is down here, right by the crankshaft, surprise, surprise. And uh, you can't really get to it or replace it without doing quite a bit of work, but I don't have any intention of replacing it. So you can inspect the connector that goes to it, the part that actually corrodes, pretty easily. On this vehicle, I just removed the radiator overflow tank, and now you have pretty good access. But for the sake of this video, the, uh, the belt that's in here is kind of in the way, so I'm just going to pop the belt off. Uh, lets me get better camera angles. And on this particular one, it is an 18 millimeter socket. You just put that around the, uh, the tensioner, pull up, and pop the belt off. So the crankshaft position sensor is this down here. Um, I'll see if I can get the camera in there to show you what I'm doing. But uh, visibility is pretty decent if you have an inspection mirror. And uh, there's a little tab on here that you just have to unclip. You can just use a, a flat screwdriver and pull this thing straight off. Pretty straightforward. I 
This would be a lot easier without the camera in the way. I'm sorry if I'm uh, getting in the way of the shot, but you basically just pry up that tab and pull the connector off. And there's the connector. Now, you can inspect the connector right here for any signs of corrosion. I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, but there is just a very small amount of corrosion in here. In my case, it's the sensor that corroded and just about fell apart. This particular connector fared pretty well. You cannot see from here the actual sensor down there, because it's at the wrong angle. So you do need an inspection mirror. And I have here a little $2 inspection mirror. So I'll see if I can feed that down there so we can see if this connector is corroded or not. I might need to uh, adjust the light here quick for you. And there we go. Now we can see the connector inside. And it looks fairly clean. There is a little bit of corrosion there too though. Not too bad. So. A lot of times you'll see a lot more corrosion than this. As I said, I just replaced this a few years ago. But uh, what you can do instead of replacing it like I did is to clean it and then just plug it back in. If it, does, it only takes a few minutes and if it doesn't work, well, you're not really out much. There are a lot of different brands of cleaners that you can use for this purpose. Deoxid is a popular one. I just ran over to Walmart and grabbed CRC, electronic cleaner. This isn't quite as good, but it should do the job well enough for me. And basically you just want any sort of electronic contact cleaner. And this qualifies. Now these cleaners don't necessarily remove everything, so it's a good idea to use some sort of soft bristled, bristled brush to uh, help scrub off that corrosion or other contaminants in there. And there really isn't a whole lot to this. You just spray the connector down, wait a little bit, scrub it out, and then make sure it's dry. And I'm just going to let that dry. In the meantime, I'm going to go down to the crank position sensor, which I can't really show you on camera, and do the same thing. Now, I would do want to note that when you buy cleaner, make sure that you get plastic safe cleaner, or you could end up ruining the connector or the gasket. Now that the contacts are clean, hopefully that will resolve whatever issue that you have. It's worth a try anyway. However, I wouldn't recommend just plugging it back in because after you've cleaned it, there's no protection left on those terminals except for the uh, surface finish itself, which may or may not be adequate. And this is somewhat controversial. A lot of people say you should plug it in dry because oils and such will cause uh, the uh, wiper gasket on there to swell and such. Um, I don't agree with that because in automotive applications, these gaskets are always silicone, so it doesn't really matter if you get the oil on them. Any vehicle, when it gets old, is going to start leaking oil. That's just the way it works. It may look all nice and shiny now, but Give it 10 years. I would recommend spraying WD-40 onto uh, various contact surfaces and then plugging them in. Now, WD-40, the WD stands for water displacement. That's actually what it's best at. Uh, it's a, a mixture of kerosene, uh, various um, naphthas, and uh, light machine oils. So it has a lot of uses, but really this is what it's best at, seasoning metal, so that it doesn't corrode. It displaces water and prevents those surfaces from corroding. So that's usually what I use WD-40 for. I don't use it to lubricate and uh, I don't use it to clean things. All I really use it for is to protect from corrosion. And it works pretty well for that. One thing to note also is that if you're on the road and you have a problem with this, you can try popping open the hood and just wiggling this connector and uh, that will probably at least let you get home again. But anyway, now you just put everything back together. And there you go, an easy fix to a potentially frustrating and expensive problem. All that's left now is to start it up, make sure you didn't leave any tools under the hood or something. Yeah, I've never done that.
and make sure that it still runs. That's obviously important. Thanks for watching.